Here are some of the most ridiculous things people have been arrested for. Number 9. Wait, how much? A 21-year-old North Texas man named Charles Ray Fuller was arrested back in 2008 trying to cash a check. That's not really that crazy, right? People try these scams all the time. It wasn't just the act of cashing the check, but it was the amount that really did him in. He tried cashing a $360 billion check because he, quote, needed to begin a record business. Obviously, the tellers at the Fort Worth Bank were instantly suspicious. Maybe the 10 zeros on the check tipped them off. Fuller said his girlfriend's mom gave him the check. However, she told the tellers that she didn't give him consent to take or cash the check. To put icing on the cake, Fuller walked in with two ounces of that funky stuff in addition to a gun. This guy just wanted some extra charges on his record, I guess. Number 8. Wedding Hoax what would you guys do to not admit committing a big mistake on your wedding day? Neil McArdle, 36, basically completely dropped the ball in booking the venue where he was supposed to have his wedding, but he couldn't find it in himself to tell his fiance, Amy Williams, that he forgot to book the venue. So what did he do? He thought it was a great idea to just call a bomb threat to the building instead. The call was made just 11 days after the well-publicized Boston Marathon bombing that happened in the U.S. When the two families arrived at the building in Liverpool, the area was swarmed with police. After the building was checked and the staff attempted to help with the supposed postponed wedding, the staff found that no reservations were actually made for the event. McArdle's future in-laws were suspicious at that point, and the bride's sister was overheard by police telling a bothered McArdle that he likely was the one who called it in. Police obviously did their investigation, and once they put two and two together, they placed McArdle under arrest. Unfortunately for McArdle, he was sentenced to a year in prison for the stun he pulled. Number 7. Cop Impersonation A Florida man thought he had come up with the perfect plan to get some discounted donuts, claimed to be a cop. However, one clerk finally caught on to his act and decided to call his bluff. Charles Berry, 48, was arrested after the local police department set up a mini sting with an undercover deputy to catch Berry in the act. Apparently, Berry had previously made multiple visits to the Dunkin' Donuts, flashed his deceased father's New Jersey police badge, and claimed to be a U.S. Marshal in order to receive discounted donuts. Police said they found a 38 caliber revolver in his pocket during the arrest, as well as ammunition in the vehicle. Barry was charged with impersonating a law enforcement officer and improper exhibition of a firearm or dangerous weapon. He was released on a $5,150 bail. Really? How much money did he save doing this? And how could it possibly have been worth it? Number 6. Maybe he just wanted a free session. If you guys ever want to rob anyone, here's a bit of advice. Try not to rob anyone that's really good at defending themselves. Specifically, don't burglarize anyone that's trained in any sort of mixed martial arts. This basically is the biggest lesson 30-year-old Matthew Lloyd learned in the most difficult way possible when he strode into defiant MMA and fitness in Burbank, California. Lloyd entered the studio carrying a black bag and approached one of the instructors in an aggressive way. As he reached inside his bag, a scuffle began between him and the instructor, 34-year-old Jacob Powell. Powell was able to stop Lloyd from using the gun that he was reaching for, and he and his students were able to call the police. Although there wasn't an exact description of what Powell and his students employed, let's just say Lloyd left the gym with the police a bit dazed and disoriented. I mean, really though, how much money do MMA gyms really have? Number 5. Just wait a few hours If you guys have any siblings in jail, try not to break them out of jail by going in yourself. Monique Armstrong obviously didn't get this memo when she tried to climb over razor wire and smash cell windows at the Mesa County Jail in California in an attempt to set her brother free from jail. Apparently, before she decided to do this crime, she actually had called 911 beforehand telling them that she was going to the correctional facility to help her 18-year-old brother get out. Talk about the element of surprise. Armstrong was actually discovered stuck in the chain link fence and razor wire. Cops were alerted when an edge fence alert went off. After she was taken into custody, Armstrong then attempted to break the shatterproof windows where she was held. 
she actually made a request to be arrested and wanted to be closer to her brother. She was put in jail for driving under the influence, driving the wrong way, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Her brother Michael was actually released on bond only a few hours after he was arrested, and if she had just waited a few hours, she probably could have waited for him at home. Number 4. What, another selfie? Two teenage girls might have gotten away with a robbery last March if it weren't for an incriminating selfie they took moments before the crime. The two unnamed underage girls, who are actually cousins, snapped a picture of themselves in black ski masks holding a large kitchen knife just before the robbery. The older of the two girls had actually robbed a burger place in southern Sweden several months earlier and made off with nearly $400. Apparently it only took police just 47 minutes to track the girls down using a sniffer dog. The dog was able to lead police to the home of the older girl's grandmother. Officers found a bag filled with the stolen money and the phone with the incriminating picture. To be honest, the fact that these girls were caught by a dog with a great nose might have been a little unlucky but to help the police make it an open and shed case with the incriminating selfie right before the crime goes down has to be one of the dumber things to do. Number 3. Wait just a few more minutes. Talk about being at the right place at the right time and fulfilling some cliches. Stephen M. White decided that he wanted to rob a Dunkin' Donuts one early morning in June 2017. However, what he failed to notice was that there was a cop that was standing around in full uniform waiting for his order when he went in. When he went inside, he decided to go ahead with his plan anyways, although he did have a little bit of sense to wait. White first entered the Dunkin' Donuts and made a request to use the restroom. Apparently that's around the time the officer left through the front door. White decided not to wait any longer, and he demanded cash from the cashier. But somehow one of the employees was able to run outside and get the officer's attention to stop the burglary in progress. All the officer simply had to do was just wait for White to step outside to arrest him. White was found with a paper bag filled with several hundred dollars of stolen money. I mean, come on, why didn't he just wait until the cop drove off with his bag of donuts and coffee? Number 2. A mini call for help? Is it really that much fun to take a selfie while getting tackled and arrested? Three girls from Nebraska apparently think so, as they filmed themselves running onto the field at a College World Series game. Kaylee, Emily, and Tori Hill all earned themselves a $1,500 fine for their antics. The girls, thought to be sisters, were actually trying to raise funds on Twitter to cover the fine. And once they somehow got the pledges going, they ran onto the field. They got everything on camera with their brush with the law, including some pretty hilarious photos of them getting wrestled off the field by security guards they were able to upload the video to Vine as well. These young ladies were handled and removed from the field by security. One of the girls tweeted, ask me if it was worth it, it was. Another girl even attempted to get a date with one of the security guards who tackled her by tweeting quote, I hope the guy who tackled me follows me, Shoddy, you was fine. Number one, another selfie gone wrong. Seriously, what is it with people doing crime and selfies? A Brooklyn man posted a photo of himself on his Facebook page showing off a gun he allegedly used in a Michigan bank robbery. And of course, he was caught by the FBI. Jules Baller decided to take a picture of himself holding his gun and post it on his Facebook page because, you know, he just needed that attention more than he needed his freedom. Baller, who refers to himself as King Romeo on his Facebook page, posted the photo with the caption, Bought my first house in Chopper today. Life's great. Yep, choppers and houses go hand in hand. Apparently that same day that he took the selfies, Baller had robbed a bank of roughly $7,000 in Bay City, Michigan, using the same guns he took selfies with. He also committed two similar crimes earlier in Pontiac, Michigan, robbing a credit union of $4,300 and a Bank of America branch of $4,000. A day after the Bay City robbery, cops found out about his Facebook page and basically it was a wrap. They were able to match Baller's face with the pictures of the robber's face captured by bank surveillance cameras. His Facebook page also showed a picture of a house in Pontiac, which the FBI and local sheriff's deputies began staking out. After Baller emerged from the house and drove off in his car, Cops stopped him and found everything in a duffel bag in the car. The best part is, before his arrest, a friend tried to warn him about the selfie under his picture. I guess his friends knew what he was up to anyways. Here's what's next.
The bizarre photos show Morgan doing weird stuff, such as pretending to eat a pile of cash, a mixed stack as he cleverly referred to it, or talking into the money as though it were a phone. TBH, I think Floyd and 50 others did it better. Not helping Morgan...